I, when I discovered the libertarian philosophy many, many years ago, Dr. West's work was one of the most influential uh, works that, that caused me to start thinking about separating school and state. And it's quite an honor to be here commenting on a talk by him. I, I'd like to make just a short comment about comparing the compromisers of the 18th and 19th century and the compromisers of today. Um, you know, Smith was one of the first ones, Adam Smith and, and, and Mill and, and Payne and Ricardo were one of the first ones to, to develop this idea of human liberty. Uh, for many centuries, freedom was described as simply the absence of physical restraint. If, if you were not held, if you were not in jail, you were considered free. And along comes Smith and says, no, freedom means more than that. It means more than the absence of physical restraint. It means the right to engage in an enterprise without a license or, or to accumulate wealth without the state interference, to pursue education without interference. But I, I think it's important to recognize that these early thinkers were looking through a glass very darkly when it comes to developing what this idea of freedom is. They were, they were among the first, the first discoverers, if you will. Uh, a, a classic mistake that they all made, of course, was on the labor theory of value, uh, that, the, that the value of an item is based on how much labor goes into producing it. Well, it, it depends on people 100 years later, Menger or Valra, to, to say, look, the value of an item is not based on how much labor goes into producing it. It's based on how the person perceives it. And the point is, is that sometimes it takes later thinkers to improve upon the thinkers that first came up with the idea, that first began developing the idea. Uh, 200 years later, after we've had time to study the ideas uh, of the founders or the 19th century political economists and uh, read later thinkers, Mises and Hayek, West, we, we don't have the room for excuse like the early thinkers did. Uh, so that when today, people advocate the compromises, uh, the vouchers, the charter schools. Uh, what is the excuse for that? Uh, clearly, the, the, the voucher people fall into two camps. Uh, those that truly believe in vouchers as an end, which means that they do say that the state has a role in education. Or they say, I cannot let people know my true feelings about abolishing public schooling totally getting the state totally out of education because pe people won't take me seriously. I won't be credible. Well, how much respect can you give to that person? A, a person that violates all standards of integrity, all standards of principle in order to be popular, to be accepted. And I think it's, it's up to us that, that have broken through, to, who have reached a higher level of awareness, a, a higher level of consciousness, to stick with principle that the state has absolutely no role in education whatsoever, that compulsory attendance laws can be repealed, school taxes can be repealed, and all state involvement in education can be removed. Throughout history, people have responded in monumental ways to ideas and to ideals and to principles. And I think it's up to us to improve on these thinkers that we're looking through a glass darkly and carry humanity up to the highest levels of educational freedom that we've ever seen. Thank you very much.